Hello everyone, it's me Tabo. Welcome to another episode of Coding for Superheroes. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, hit that like button, turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on upcoming tutorials. Now in today's lesson, we're going to be creating what I call a plasmoid particle dome. In this lesson, you're going to be learning how to use the reflector module to create reflections on a circle geometry surface, use Perlin noise to animate vertices on a sphere, create a dome-like shape using points. I will introduce you also to fake glow material in this project, which is a very cool material created by Anderson Mancini. I will also include a link to the source if you want to learn more about it. Last but not least, we will also use lightning strike module to add lightning effects to our scene. To follow along, I will include a link to all the necessary resources. So without further ado, let's get started. As usual, I have our basic setup, which consists of a renderer, camera, scene, orbit controls, and a render function. Over here at the top, this is where we'll be sourcing our Perlin noise file. Over here, we will import all the necessary modules for this project. Okay, so we're going to start by creating a circle geometry with a radius of 132 segments. With this geometry, we'll create a mesh and call it top floor. Next, we create a mesh standard material with these property values. We will position our plane on the y-axis by 0.005 and then rotate it by 90 degrees on the x-axis. Next, we're going to create another circular surface, this time using the reflector module and our circle geometry. The reflector module takes two arguments, one is a geometry and the second one is an object with the following property options. So we've got clip bias which will be 0.003. The texture width is windows.innerwidth divided by window device pixel ratio. Texture height is window.innerheight divided by window device pixel ratio. Then we give it this color. This will be our reflective surface. We will also rotate it by 90 degrees on the X axis like we did with the previous mesh and add it to the scene. Next we will add two lights using point light. We will first create one light and make the intensity 150 and the distance to 200.5. Afterwards, we'll create a clone of it. We will position each one according to these values and then add them both to our scene. Now we'll be creating a circle with points. We will create the following variables called PTS, which is an empty array, point count, which will be the number of points we create. Main R will be the radius of the circle. Outer limit and inner limit will be managing the boundaries and the random spreading of our points. Inside this loop, we will be using the set from cylindrical chords vector 3 method. We will use the in out limb rand variables to control the spreading of the points within the main radius and then add the points to our PTS array. Outside the for loop, we will create three variables. Points Geo, which is a buffer geometry and will set its points from the PTS array. Points Mat, which is a point material with the following property values. We then create a point mesh from the two and then add it to the scene. To create our dome, we'll repeat the process using set from spherical chords vector 3 method instead. We will create two more variables called phi and theta which are required by the method. We will set the value of phi to math a cos minus one plus two times i divided by point count and theta equal to math dot squared point count times math pi times phi. We will make some changes to in out by multiplying math dot random minus 0 0.5 by two. We will push new vector three object into the PTS array and call set from spherical chord. Inside the method, we will pass the following arguments. Main R, phi divided by two times math.random and theta times math.random. We will create a points geo2, points mat2 and points mesh2 variable. Add points mesh to the scene afterwards. 
We are going to repeat the previous steps to create the blue points around the orb. Once again, tweak in the values a bit to get the desired look. These points will be animated later using Perl and Noise. Once we're finished putting the points in the point array, we will create another point mesh using buffer geometry and the points material. We add the points mesh to the scene and then set its position to these values. We will scale it on the Y axis to 0.9. We'll create a P3 variable and assign it to the geometry attributes position dot array. We have come a long way now. Congratulations to have made it this far. We just have a few more steps to go before we're finished. Before we continue any further, let us check how everything looks so far. Let's open our terminal and run our local server. Awesome. Everything looks great so far. We have our dome shape made of points and our circular point surface, some nice lighting from our point lights and the blue point sphere in the center. Okay. Let's get the rest of this baby finished. Next up, we will create two spheres. These will be combined to make the glowing orb. We create two variables called orb and orb2 using a sphere geometry and fake glow material. Use the highlighted values for the geometry and material of each mesh and add it to the scene. Afterwards, position and scale them according to these highlighted values. Let us check how everything looks so far. Awesome. Everything looks great so far. Next, create a variable called array and assign it to the ob.geometry.attribute.position.array. Create an empty array called indices. Next, we're going to create half a sphere. We're going to use its vertex position for the lightning strike. These highlighted values are for creating our half sphere geometry. We create a variable called sphere half pause array and assign it our geometry's vertices position array. Create an empty array called sphere half indices. Next, we create a for loop iterating our sphere half pause array dot length. Inside, we create a vector three variable called indices. We assign its X, Y, and Z properties to the highlighted array indexes and then add it to the sphere half in the C's array. Let's create an empty object called params, followed by a for loop where we create 20 objects inside of params with the following highlighted properties. Next, we create an empty array called lightning pause array and a variable called indices index, which is equal to zero. We will manually populate the lightning pause array with vector three copies of the specified position from our sphere half indices array and perform a divide scalar by three. We will increment the indices index by 28 at the second iteration. Next, we create two empty arrays called lightning and lightning mesh, followed by a mesh basic material called ray material with these highlighted property values. Following that, we will create a function called create lightning. Inside, we create a for loop where we populate the lightning array with lightning strike objects derived from the params object property values, and then create a mesh to add to the lightning mesh array. Afterwards, we add the final mesh to the scene from the relative lightning mesh array index. Execute the create lightning function afterwards. Next, we're going to add flickering spheres to the end tip of the lightning strikes, meaning wherever the lightning strikes, there will be a sphere. These are created from predetermined positions. For this, we'll use instanced mesh. If you're not familiar with instanced mesh, this is basically how you create them. First, we create a variable called mesh index equal to zero, and then create an instanced mesh called mesh. This will take an argument of a sphere geometry of 0.1 scale, a mesh basic material with the following property values, and the count will be equal to the length of lightning mesh array. Next, we create a for loop using the length of our lightning pause array. Inside, we create a variable called position. This will hold the lightning's X, Y, and Z values, followed by a scale with the value of one for all axes and quaternion with default values. Next, we create a matrix for variable called matrix. We compose it using position, quad, and scale. Afterwards, we set the mesh's matrix using mesh index, matrix, 
and then increment mesh index by one and add it to the scene. For the ripple animation of the orb, we'll be using Perl and noise. We are going to do this inside our render function. Let us first start by creating some important variables that will be useful for our animation. Outside the render function, we will create a variable called clock from 3.clock. Inside the render function, we will create a variable called elapsed time from clock.getElapsedTime. Last but not least, we will create a variable called k with a value of 5 and it will be used with Perlin noise. First, we create a for loop where we are going to loop over the orb's position array. Inside the loop, we are going to assign the x, y and z values of vert to the relative vertices. Next, we will normalize vert and then perform multiply scalar by 4 plus 0.3 multiplied by noise perlin. Inside the noise perlin method, we will pass verts.y and verts.z multiplied by k and our elapsed time variable. Afterwards, we will pass the changes made to verts back to the relative vertices inside of our obs pause array. After the for loop, we will update our obs vertices position and compute the vertex normals. For the animation of the points around the orb, we will repeat the previous steps with some minor changes to the values. After normalizing verts, we will perform multiply scalar by 3.9 plus a random number between 0 and 2.8. Inside the Perlin noise method, we will multiply verts.y and z by k times 2. After that, we will update the vertices position and compute the vertex normals as well. Let us check how everything looks so far. Awesome. Everything looks great so far. To animate the lightning strike, we will create an if condition to check if the length of lightning and lightning mesh array is bigger than zero. If true, we will manually copy the source offset and dest offset of our lightning's ray parameter from the matching position in lightning pause array. Afterwards, we create a for loop to update each lightning in the array using elapsed time. Last but not least, let's animate the material opacity of our instance spheres using math random. Let us check how everything looks. Okay, there goes our plasmoid particle dome. It looks pretty cool if I may say so myself. Well, looks like we've reached the end of the lesson. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I have, and most importantly, I hope you learned something new. So with all that said, love and peace, I'm out.